Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna to be giving you a tour of our fully renovated kitchen. Blood, sweat, and tears have gone into this house. So I am so, so excited to show you guys around. If you guys like home and renovation videos, make sure you guys are subscribed. I have a full kitchen cost breakdown video coming up on my channel and you guys do not wanna miss it. So let's dive right in and check it out. Once you travel the world, all the spaces inside your heart. here we are in the kitchen so as you can see the design is very minimal very modern that is very much our kind of style and the look that we were going for we wanted to make sure this space not only looked great but that it was really functional and practical as well in the main part of the kitchen we have loads of countertop space we opted for this luxury laminate surface in a matte black it was a really good compromise at the time of getting a really high-end durable countertop finish whilst not breaking the bank. One thing we made sure to do was actually to add waterfall edges. This just elevated the design a little bit and made it a lot more high-end looking. If you have the option to get a waterfall edge on your worktop, I would definitely recommend because honestly, it just makes such a statement. So obviously the cabinets is what makes up majority of the kitchen. We actually opted with an Ikea kitchen because the quality is actually insanely good. And also they are so reasonably priced. If you're on a budget and you wanna go for a high-end look, do not discount Ikea because we are beyond happy with what we got. So the actual carcasses of the units are from the method range from Ikea and we went for the black wood effect. So we actually decided to go for two different cabinet fronts in our kitchen. Majority of the kitchen has the Kungsbacker fronts on them, which is a really nice soft matte black finish. It's a flat panel design, so really minimal, simple, exactly what we were after. You'll notice that we didn't actually go for any wall units anywhere. Instead, we opted for large pantry units like these ones behind me here. Now these are actually finished in the Askersund fronts which is a light ash wood effect. It actually goes really really well with the floor that we have in here as well. So the reason that we opted for two different cabinet fronts is because we just thought having the black absolutely everywhere was just going to be too heavy and it was going to really close in the front especially if we were going to have black on these pantry units here. So we decided to go for two different fronts um, just to break it up a little bit, add in a little bit more warmth and texture with this kind of like wood frontage back here. And I love that it looks like a freestanding piece of furniture. Now let's talk about storage. We don't actually have a lot of cupboards in our kitchen because we decided to opt for deep pan drawers. I find that drawers are so much more practical. No more losing things at the back of a cupboard. They're far easier to keep on top of things, keep it organized and access all the things that you need to get daily. Ikea also has a lot of products that help with the organization within the drawers as well. So definitely worth checking them out. And as per usual, they're a really good price. In these pantry units, we actually have a bit of a mix between shelves and pull out drawers as well, just to maximize the storage that we do have in there. You may have noticed that we don't actually have any plug sockets out on the side. And that's because in the pantry unit, we've kind of turned it into a little bit of an appliance garage. So we have power sockets in the back of that cupboard. That's where we keep our microwave, toaster, coffee machine, smoothie blender, all of those things, rather than having them out on the side and kind of creating clutter, we opted just to kind of stow them away in there and go for more of like a clean and minimal look. Another practical addition, which we have never had before, is actually a pull out bin. So we went for one that has two different bins in there. So we have like our recycling and our normal general waste bin really practical it's a really really easy thing to add to your kitchen as well this one i can't remember where we got it from but it wasn't actually ikea you can retrospectively fit a bin unit into any cabinet but i would definitely recommend because again it just means less kind of like things 
out that kind of clutter up the space a lot it's nice to just kind of tuck it away in a unit and not have to think about it let's talk about handles so we finished all of the fronts in the same handles which are these really really thin black metal kind of like inline handles they're more of like a finger pull grip so they blend in seamlessly you hardly kind of see them i wouldn't say they're the most practical handle that you could get on your kitchen but they do look really good those are just from amazon they look really expensive, really high end. And it just goes to show that you can still buy good quality products that don't have to cost the earth and get the look that you want for a little bit less. Now, let me show you some of the appliances that we have fitted into this kitchen as well. So behind me here, we have our Zanussi um, oven and grill, which is an eye level oven. Once you've gone eye level, you never go back. Zanussi is a great brand. They look great. They're really good quality. They're a good reputable brand but they're actually really reasonably priced as well. We obviously opted for this matte black one because it kind of blends in obviously with the rest of the kitchen and it has some fun like settings on it, like a self-cleaning mode and things like that as well. Moving over here, we have our Zanussi 4-ring induction hob. We love induction hobs. They're really energy efficient. They're super easy to clean. They heat up really fast, cool down really fast as well. Again, just very minimal, clean look that kind of finishes off the kitchen. Above the hob, we just did this built-in extractor hood with open shelving either side. Again, I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but it's just really clean, simple, minimal. Because we don't have a lot of stuff on the side, I love that we opted for these open shelving because the wood adds in a little bit of warmth and texture, but we can add some really cute little styling bits up there. Obviously you could opt for more practical open shelving, but we just wanted to do it as like a little bit of a statement and add a little bit more decor into the room. We have a fully tiled backsplash that runs all along this back wall as well. These are vertically stacked white gloss ceramic tiles. They're just from B&Q, but I love the irregularity of it. Everything in here is very clean lines and quite structured. So having a tile that had a little bit of irregularity to it, I thought added another element to the room that it was missing before. We actually went for gloss tiles, partly because they're very, very easy to clean. But again, everything is so matte and stripped back in here that I felt that this space really needed a little bit of gloss, just something to kind of break up all those matte textures. These are a great tile because I think you can use them in literally any kind of house. You could go for a more traditional kind of brick stack, but obviously we went for the vertical, really clean linear stack, which has more of a modern twist on it. These are actually the same tiles that we used in our main bathroom. So those two rooms kind of speak to each other a little bit in terms of design. So less interesting, but very, very useful. We have our integrated dishwasher. This was very much a learning curve because we didn't realize Ikea cabinets are not standard size cabinets. Shock. The Ikea cabinets actually go lower to the ground, which means that you get more cabinet space but it does mean if you wanna use fitted appliances like the dishwasher, you have to be really careful about the sizing. So we actually had to go for an Ikea dishwasher. It's really good quality, we don't mind, but just a little heads up, if you are looking at Ikea kitchens, you may in certain circumstances have to opt for some of their appliances because the sizes are just a little bit different. So a little learning curve there, but not the end of the world. To the left of the dishwasher, we have our kitchen sink. I love that we had the kitchen sink in front of the window so that when you're doing dishes and boring stuff like that, you can kind of look out. And it's just that kind of idyllic, I don't know what it is about having a kitchen sink in front of a window. So our choice of kitchen sink is a little bit different. We don't have a drainer board and we don't have drainer grooves cut into our worktop either. Instead, we got a kitchen sink which has two bowls which are the same size. It's a gray stainless steel, so it's really easy to keep clean. And I love the really square, modern look of it. What we actually do is use the right bowl to do our washing up. And then we actually have a drying rack set into the bowl on the left so that if anything needs to be out and drying, we put it in there so it's not out on the worktop and kind of creating clutter. This is the first time we've done this. It works really well and it's definitely something that I would repeat again. We also went for a large black pullout tap. If you guys are thinking about getting a pull-out tap, I would definitely recommend. It's life-changing. Even for just like cleaning the sink, it is so, so useful. I would definitely recommend. Ours wasn't super expensive. I think we got it from Wayfair. Um, but yeah, we absolutely love just the really nice kind of big statement of how it looks and it's practical as well. The last appliance in the kitchen I haven't spoken about yet, 
which is arguably the most important one is the fridge. So we decided to go for an integrated fridge and a freezer, which is next to our pantry. Again, it just blends in seamlessly. You wouldn't know it was there. And the one that we went for is actually a really good size. It goes up quite tall. So we still get loads of fridge storage. One of my favorite features in this kitchen is this big peninsula bar area. So in our last house, we actually had a big kitchen island, which had bar seating at it. We used it all the time. So as soon as we saw this kitchen, we knew we wanted to incorporate something similar. We don't quite have enough room slash the right layout to be able to have an island in here. So we decided to go for an L-shaped peninsula, which still has the bar seating. It makes it so much more of a sociable area. So if someone is in here cooking, prepping, you know, people could come and sit at the bar stools and kind of like socialize. Plus it just means loads more seating for when people do come around. And finally, let's move into the dining area. So some of you guys may remember that we actually used to have a wall here which separated the kitchen and the diner. So we knocked that down to create this really nice big open plan dining space. Again, having this one open space just means it's so much more sociable when we have people around. We were able to fit a really big dining table back here. So again, plenty of room to host people when they come around. Because this whole room is very minimal, we actually did a feature wall back here and just did some simple wood paneling to that back wall, just to add in a little bit more texture and detailing to the room. And we finish off that space with a pendant light very clean, simple, minimal lines, very in keeping with the rest of the kitchen, obviously. And it also has three different light settings to it. So you can change the kind of intensity of the lighting and set whatever mood you're after. Overall, we tried to zone areas. You would have noticed that the cooking areas are all together, the washing areas are all together, all of the food storage areas are all together. We tried to keep in mind the golden triangle, which is a simple and easy to follow principle to help design a practical kitchen space. But that is a wrap on the kitchen tour. I hope you guys enjoyed having a full on look around. Links for everything will be in the description in case you guys do wanna go and check anything out. Don't forget to let us know in the comments below what was your favorite part of the kitchen. We'd love to know what you guys love best. And if you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I will catch you guys in the next one.